thought that was weird. Yeah. What is it, Gary? Uh, on our phone is Captain Jenks, who went to the DeBella de Ball last night, which most people can't believe still goes on. What was it, three people there? Uh, it, it wasn't a big turnout, but... Uh, all right, I'll take care Jenks of this. Jenks got thrown out physically. All right, I'll take care of this. Yes, good morning, huh? Captain Jenks, hi. It was, it was quite brutal, actually. Yesterday. You know, we don't talk much about the Philadelphia Zookeeper anymore because there's really not much to talk about. His show is practically over with. Well, I he mean, hardly has a show. Yeah, yeah. Well, only when he does things like this to think that he's on a roll again. So he had um, the Zookeeper. For those of you around the country, the Zookeeper in Philadelphia is this guy who we beat. He had like a 15 rating when we came to town, and now he has like a 5. Now he has nothing out. Now he has nothing. We have something like an 11 or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And um, he used to throw a ball every year, and everyone used to come in Philadelphia. That's before we showed up, and now nobody comes except for Captain Jenks. And Captain Jenks got thrown out last night. Yeah. Now, why did you get thrown out? Well, Howard, I don't understand because... Were you a paying customer? Yeah, well, well, what happens was he solicited a address on, on, the, uh, on a station, and whoever wrote in... You got to write in and send a self-addressed stamped envelope, and he sent you a ticket. Right. So that's what I did, and I had two tickets to go. So I, t I took a friend of mine, and we went all the way out there last night. And we, when we first got in there, there was there was probably about I'd say about eighty people or ninety people there. <laughs> how many? Pl how, how many people how would you say? How many people would you say it's supposed to hold? Uh, I, I say probably could have hold three hundred out. Oh, my. <laughs> there was about 80 or 90 people, and they were all really dressed up because it was a big formal thing. Yeah, right. And John DeBello didn't even want to mingle with the guest. He sat in the VIP room most of the night. Well, of course, because he's embarrassed. Don't right. you understand? And plus, he's a very important person. <laughs> you he's, know, he was supposed to pack this place, too. Bolder than ever he is, Howard. He's an important person. He has a five share in Philadelphia. <laughs> he's bolder than ever, Howard. Right. And anyhow... I, I went in hey, there, what were you I, telling me? They were giving away. A, he was doing a uh, dating game on the air where uh, one of the listeners got to win a date with him. Yes. Oh, he's so, giving himself away now. I'm just saying, gee, the, the grieving husband. Yes. Well, <laughs> I that, guess he was pretty shook up. Yeah. He's, he's dating already. I, I might even wait three months after my wife died. He's moved back into the house already. Huh? Oh, did he? Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. So you go to this uh, thing, and I, and well, I actually, went in with a actually, pair of him and his. Uh, and shortly after, they started doing a thing where the, where the disc jockeys got up on the stage and spoke to the crowd a little bit. Yeah. And most of them were just yelling the F word and trying to be cool. Right. But then, John, or excuse me, Bubba John and Mark Drucker, who's the afternoon cruise show, they got up. <laughs> Bubba John and Mark Drucker. Yes. <laughs> Bubba John. Mark Drucker, the most unhip guy on the planet. Yeah, what does he have to say? Well, they, they called up their traffic guy, whose name's Robert Workman, and he trashed you, Howard. Oh, yeah. Who was that, the traffic guy? Yes, he's like this big, old, fat, gray, curly-haired, bearded man. Well, he's listen, uh, I, you. I would imagine that uh, their whole station trashes me because I've wrecked their entire station. Uh, you can yes, but nothing, nothing that you've done physically... Uh, no, but listen. They, they took he, it personal. He can trash me all he wants, but uh, the truth of the matter is I have all the ratings. Yeah. So, uh, so who cares? And they're all still bald. Look, uh, a traffic guy. I mean, you talk about the least happening job in radio. It's got to be the traffic guy. Yeah. The traffic guy. Can you imagine? He's taking you on. Yeah, he's taking me on. Like, <laughs> he's got some scary talent that I should be intimidated by. The and he's talking guy. to the 80 people who are possibly listening. Yeah, I mean, how do you trash <laughs> anybody when you go on the radio and do a promotion and 80 people show up? <laughs> and you can't even fill a 300-person club. It's like he got up on stage and just started yelling, Howard sucks. He did? Yes. All right. Well, I'll keep that in mind when he looks for a job with this company. But yes, go that's, ahead. That's you, Robert Workman. Okay, yes. go ahead. So, so then you know, so uh, it's, a funny, it's a funny thing when guys are out of work and they're looking, and then all of a sudden they end up at one of our stations and they think I don't notice. Yeah. But I do. Go ahead. Oh, cool. So I started walking around to the side of the stage to greet him when he came off the stage. Yeah. And John, the, the woman that John DeBell was with, well, well, he was standing with her anyway, she's like this big heifer. Who was standing at the side of the stage? All right, so there was a heavy woman standing next to her. Yes. Him, yes, go ahead. And and Robert Workman came off came off the the stage, and I shook his hand, and I was talking to him for a while. Mm -hmm. And the girl goes over to Mark Drucker and tells him, points at me, and says, "That's Captain Jay." Yes. Yeah, so. so so that proves she must have seen one eight hundred fifty two start in order to surmise that because she she wouldn't know what I look All like. All right. So then next, what happens? Drucker goes and tells security. And security comes over and says, we, we have to ask you to leave. 
<laughs> oh, if uh, Drucker was such a man, why didn't he come up and throw you out? Right, that's what I, that's I don't what see I mean. why well, you weren't doing anything bad. Robin, I didn't do anything. Well, that's because they can't handle it, don't you see? They I think you have a, a case there. They asked me you have a, a, uh, a suit, I would say, for at least 11 to $15 million. <laughs> I would say uh, roughly. Uh, I'm not a legal mind. Because, but... quite frankly, that was a public function. You had tickets. Yeah. Yes, I did have tickets. I had a stamp on my hand and everything. Uh, on your hand, you say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you are annoying. I guess there is a... <laughs> but could they tell that from across the room? I would say you have at least a 20 to $30 million lawsuit. <laughs> but uh, go ahead, yes? Well, well you I... have suffered, haven't you? And the woman kept... <laughs> yeah. And the, 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 the overweight, heavy woman kept running up to me going, You pushed it too far this time! You pushed and it too far? What did you push too yes, far? I, I couldn't understand what she was talking about, Art. Mm -hmm. so, so, so they threw you out of the... Well, the security asked me for identification and asked me if I worked for another radio station. You I said, told them, of course not. Yeah, and what if you did? Yes. What, do, what is it that you're going to do? You're going to... What are you going to do? Drop a bomb on this crowd? Good, bald man. Then they grabbed me by the arms and they, were, and they escorted me out. And there were a bunch of fans in there that I'd weeded out. Yeah. Who were yelling, Captain Jackson, yelling yes and stuff. I, I was never <laughs> so proud to be a Howard Stern fan. At that well, there you now. go. Captain Jenks, of course, uh, the guy who... Uh, Called the Chicago radio station the other day, disguised as Alice Cooper. Yes. Hey, you know, as long as I got you on the phone, we should listen to that one last time. You got that, Fred? I don't have it handy, no. Boy, that was a good call. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll play it later in the show. We need to play it now. That was a pretty funny call. Yes, it was, huh? Yeah. All right, Captain Jenks, thank you. That's all right, Gary. I'll play it later. Ooh, cool. All right, thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> Uh, thank you. <laughs> that was an answer. They're now communicating. Well, uh, you know, these guys, I hear about all these guys who uh, badmouth me, like traffic guys, and they all eventually end up looking for jobs with us. And you know what? I'll just keep that one filed. Mm -hmm. Captain Jenks is like uh, the zookeeper's worst nightmare. I mean, he just he's relentless. He just shows up everywhere. And he just stands there, and they get crazy from yeah. him. Yeah. That's all he has to do now is show up. Yeah, he didn't do anything. He just showed up and they throw him out. <laughs> and Mark Drucker, I used to work with him 100 years ago. Uh, I mean, uh, talk about a shaky guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this guy, this guy's nothing. They got him working with who? The, the, the Bubba. <laughs> Bubba. Bubba John? Bubba and Mark Drucker. <laughs> Bubba Johnson and Mark Drucker. <laughs> uh, stellar career there. And, uh, you know, he's a big pussy. Why, if he doesn't like Captain Jenks, why doesn't he throw him out? Why are you calling security? This is with the security. Mm. You don't like somebody? Why don't you Just throw move. him out? move. The guy wasn't doing anything. Yeah. I mean, if he did something and he was annoying people, he wasn't doing anything. But, uh, look, uh, let him sit there with their 80 people. Yeah. Imagine 80 people. <laughs> How pathetic is that? I mean, you might as well not have a radio station if only 80 people show up. I can get 80 friends to show up at my house You're without... Big you got not only your morning team there. You it, got everybody from the station. You it, got everything. Everybody turns out. You got the whole station behind it. 80 people show up. <laughs> I, t I tell you, I have never seen a radio station fall apart quicker. Well, I shouldn't say that. In Los Angeles. That's right. I got to get you. Want to hear the Los I Angeles I want to hear radio the numbers. I just heard about the uh, we went up, they went down. Right, I don't know what really happened. Now, these ratings are before the L.A. funeral, so I okay. can't imagine what those are going to be. But, okay. We have in Los Angeles right now a 6.7. We're number one in Los Angeles. Okay. Again. What did they have when we came? All right. When we came, they had about a... Eight or so. Yeah? Eight or nine, something around there. I don't there. think they were as high as a nine. No, I don't know. You know, I don't know that. We'd have to call Andy. Yeah, I really would like to know that number because I think... Well, we let's get Andy on the phone. Surpass them. Gary, get me Andy on... Here, wait a second. Baba Bowie. Andy. What time is it in Los Angeles? Is it too early to call, Robin? Yes. It, that's a perfect time to call. Okay, good. Too early. What time is it? <laughs> it's about four. Going on four o'clock. Oh, I see. So is it three o'clock? Somewhere at 345 or so? Yeah. Oh, that's not too early. <laughs> he's got to be up. He's, he's got to be. He's got to be so excited about the ratings that he probably he's up. didn't go to sleep. All right, hold on. It's ringing, Howard. All right, thanks. Baba Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. Fred just sneaks those in there. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Hi, this is 
is Andy. Patty and I can't get to the phone right now. So leave your name and number and <laughs> yeah. we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks for calling. I can't Bye. get to the phone right now. Just, yeah. Andy. 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 Andy, it's Howard. Pick up. We're on the air. Pick up the file. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hi, Andy. How you doing? Yes. Well, I'm, you know, partying. Really cool. <laughs> it's really cool. That's real cool. <laughs> How's it going? It's going pretty good. I'm discussing the ratings, and I've um, run into a question that I can't answer. Okay. All right. Um, when we started in Los Angeles, what was our rating in the morning? 1.8. A 1.8. And what was um, Mark and Brainless? 8.9. All right, 8.9. 8. 8. Okay. Okay, good. So, uh, as of yesterday, we have a 6.7. Yes. Right. Mark and Brainless now will drop from a 5.5 5 to a 4.9. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Little tumble. Ooh. Yeah, they're in the fours. Whoops. Now, right behind them is the Spanish station, almost ready to take over. They, the Spanish station has a 4.8. Oh, dear. And they have a 4.9, so a tenth of a point is separated. Them. So they're sinking like, like a lead balloon. Yeah, you know, we've already chopped their ratings in half. Yeah. Well, they're already in half. Yeah. That's like chopping down a tree. <laughs> and now we have to come someone take out the stump. That's right. We just got to pull out the stump <laughs> and it'll be done. And what happened to the radio? What? Where is their radio station at? KLOS really is losers. LOS stands for loser. <laughs> Those are the first three letters in loser, right? That's right. They really are losers. Where, where are they at as a radio station? Uh, I think overall now they're number 15. <laughs> and we're number four overall. Whoa. Yeah. And number one in the morning. Yep. So we're having fun. They've lost 55% of their audience. 55%. How do you get rid of that many people that fast? <laughs> how could yeah? I mean, how many people get it? I mean, that's pretty awful. Well, it's, it's it's a real simple formula. What you do is you get the king on this radio station, and Ooh. then you get Carrie Curlop to program that radio station. <laughs> there you go. It's a great formula. It's really cool. <laughs> it's real cool. It's real cool. <laughs> it's real cool. <laughs> so anyway, you um. All right, let's see what else now. Uh, to make matters worse. I mean, Jay Thomas has a 4.3. Whoa. As oh, bad as he that's is. That's sad. They're about to approximate Jay Thomas. I mean, yeah, right. can you imagine if Jay, if Jay beats them? Oof. Ooh. That's like the biggest insult in radio when Jay Thomas beats you. Jay's the, the most unfunny guy on a the guy planet. A guy who doesn't even pay attention to his radio show. Rick Dees has a 4.3. And so, Rick Dees is working hard for that. <laughs> remember when Rick Dees used to actually be like the number one disc jockey yeah. in Los Angeles? So we went up 370%. They lost 55% of their audience. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're about to be beaten by the most unfunny man on radio, Jay Thomas. <laughs> Even they, they are less talented than Jay Thomas. Right. Can oh you imagine? God. Can you imagine being less talented than Jay Thomas? <laughs> That's a laugh. Oof. Because nobody on this planet is... There are <laughs> listeners in our audience who have more talent than Jay Thomas. <laughs> Well, uh, that's great. That is really great. It keeps getting more fun. Yes, it does. You know, and this was the fun we were talking about. We got to do something else in Los Angeles next. Time. Like when when Jay Thomas beats them. Yeah, <laughs> we got to have something for them. We're going to come back and do something else. <laughs> <laughs> what are they? What are they? We'll have uh, to visit them at the hospital. Right. No, no, no. After a funeral, usually the, don't they have some ceremony when they unveil the uh, monument they put on your grave? You know what? What it is is a year. <laughs> You wait a year and then you unveil the tombstone. Right. <laughs> I think next year we come back and unveil the tombstone. <laughs> All right, Andy. All right, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Andy Bloom, obviously a long night of partying. <laughs> <laughs> we got to take a break here. I'll come back and take your phone calls right after these words. <laughs>